Hey, AMP the bass player here. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do YouTube bass covers. This is probably going to end up being a super long video because we're going to get really, really detailed, but I'm going to show you everything you need to know from the gear you need to how to use the software to how to record yourself and then put it all together at the end. You're currently watching the Windows version. If you want to see how to do this on Mac instead, click the little thing up at the top. So really the trick to getting the best audio and video quality is to record them separately and then combine them in video editing software. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to do that, starting with the gear that you're going to need to be able to pull this off. You'll need your base, obviously, a quarter inch cable, a camera, whether that be a DSLR or even a GoPro or just your phone, a tripod that will suit your camera, an audio interface, a computer, a set of good headphones, audio recording software, and also video editing software. All right, that probably feels like a ton of stuff and your wallet is probably crying right now, but I'm gonna show you a couple of budget options, including some free software, to show you that you don't have to break the bank to do this well. Now, assuming that you already have a computer and a base, the next most expensive piece of gear is going to be the camera, but chances are you probably already have something that'll do the trick, your phone. A lot of modern phone cameras are capable of producing 4K images, which is really high resolution, but the limitation that they have is that the microphones are not great for recording music, and they're especially bad for recording bass. And that's where you need an audio interface. This is going to convert your guitar signal into something that the computer can use and will deliver extremely high quality audio. Now, I've been using this Focusrite Scarlett for a couple of years. I really, really like this thing. It's only, you know, 100 bucks or so. You can also use like a Behringer UM2, which are really cheap and, and good. I saw one come up on the used market just locally here for like 30 bucks, so you can get them pretty cheap too. Another option you have is if you don't have a computer, but you do have an iPad, the iRig is a good option. It basically does the same thing, but for mobile devices. I'll have links down in the description for all the gear I used. None of them are like affiliate links or anything, so I don't make a dime if you click on them and you use them. They're just there for your benefit. If you do want to support me though, I do have a merch store and a Patreon, but let's get back to the video. Now, as far as actually recording the audio, you have a lot of freedom over how you do that. A lot of these audio interfaces offer you both an XLR jack as well as a quarter inch jack so you can mic up your bass cabinet or you can take the DI signal from the back of the amp or through a DI pedal or directly out of your pedal board. For today though, I'm just going to plug my bass directly into the quarter inch jack here and we'll be controlling all of our tones through software that is free. There was a time where software emulation for bass and guitar was not great, but that time has long since passed. I've been able to get great sounds out of just using, you know, GarageBand. If you don't love the stock presets there, I also make presets as part of my How to Sound Like series. So tons of options to get good sounds out of just plugging your bass directly into this and then using software. All right, to get started on the PC side of things, we're just gonna open up Amplitude. I'm using Amplitude 4. I tried really hard to get Amplitude 5 to work, but it was having some latency issues, so I'm sticking with 4 because that's what works for me. Hopefully in the future, I'll do an updated one where we do uh, Amplitude 5. Uh, but let me go through and I'll show you my audio setup here. We're using the ASIO driver, and then I've got my Focusrite interface selected, and then we're choosing input two for both the left and right channel. Our output device is gonna be one and two together, and then I found that a buffer size for my computer is 192. If you experience a lot of latency, you can reduce that and get better. I'll even show you the panel here. This comes from the uh, Scarlet driver. You can get it from their website. For whatever reason, audio tends to be a giant pain in the butt on Windows. On Mac, it's just plug and play. Everything just seems to work. You select where you want audio to come in and where you want it to come out, and it just does it. On Windows, it's really, really finicky. And add to the mix that I'm also running this voice meter thing because I used to do streaming on Twitch, and so I needed to have my microphone input and my desktop audio separate and my Discord audio separate. Anyway, I'd, it, it just like layers and layers of complexity, but if you set your um, settings up this way, it should just work for you. So the one limitation you will have with Amplitude on the free version is that you do only have two tracks. So track one is gonna be our bass, and then track two is going to be our um, track that we're playing to. So for this one, I have my Mic Dirt uh, preset, and I've just been using this for everything. It sounds so good just for everyday playing, so I'm most of the time when I'm practicing, I'm using this preset just because it sounds really, really good on all of my basses. 
And then to get our track, we we'll come to YouTube and then this one is going to be American Idiot. We'll just grab it from the actual official music video here. One trick that I've been doing is you just put PP at the end here and that'll take you to this website where you can grab the MP3 here. We'll download that. Then over here, we'll select input two and then we'll import audio and then we'll come to the downloads and then that should be done because my internet's wicked fast. We'll say open and that'll import it. And then the way to get to the, uh, the traditional view for this is you click this button down in the bottom left corner and you'll see we've got our base here and our track here. Now, before you actually do this for real, I recommend doing a dry run. So do record yourself. I wouldn't worry about video at this stage, but make sure that you, all of your levels are where you want them to be, that you're comfortable playing through the whole thing. You don't wanna stop practicing when you get it right. You wanna practice until you never get it wrong. That's the standard you wanna hit with your bass covers. You wanna put your best work out there. So make sure that you put in the time to practice at this stage. So if you need a little bit less track, you'll have the track selected and then you'll just move this fader up and down as needed. But anyway, you're at this stage, you're ready to record audio. Okay, so now that our audio is taken care of, let's talk about video. The single biggest factor in getting a good image for your video is not the camera, it's your lighting. Natural daylight is some of the best quality light you can get, so you'll always wanna film in front of a window if you can. So right now, I'm filming this in my kind of dimly lit apartment, but it's middle of the day. It's a really like cloudy, overcast day, but because I've got such a big window here, I'm actually getting decent light. I'm also using this light up here to give myself just a little bit of color interest. You can see what happens to my video quality if I stand in front of a window. It looks, looks terrible, but if I just turn around, wow, much better. If you do have to shoot at nighttime though, I recommend getting a lamp, even just a desk lamp will help quite a lot, getting more light on you and therefore more light into this camera sensor. One problem you may run into if you do that is you end up with really harsh light. So you'll have like really bright on one side and then like really dark on the other side. And what you can do is throw like a white t-shirt over your lamp and that will sort of diffuse the light by effectively making it a bigger source. There, there's lots of like lighting tutorials up on YouTube. You can check them out here. Uh, you can also buy specific LED lights for this purpose. The lights I use are just some cheap $40 USB lights. I'll have those linked down below if you wanna check those out. They're okay. The bottom line is that daylight is the best quality light. So strive for that if at all possible. Now, if you happen to be filming on an iPhone, I recommend switching this over to 4K at 24 frames per second. I find that that produces the best quality image. Though one small note on frame rates, and this will happen regardless of whether you use Android or iPhone, is a lot of phones use something called a variable frame rate. And this is just the dumbest thing, and I don't know why there isn't a setting to just change it to a, a constant frame rate, but recording your audio separately will mean that your video may be slightly longer or shorter than the audio because the frame rate isn't constant. There is a free program called Handbrake and you can run your video footage through that to basically smooth it out to a constant frame rate. It's an extra step. It's really annoying. There is no setting on any phone that I have ever seen that will let you just change it to a constant frame rate. So it's just, it's just one thing to keep in mind if you end up filming on a phone. So at this point, all that's left to do is to hit record. I like to start my video camera first and then start the audio recording in GarageBand. And then you can also leave yourself like a measure at the beginning to give yourself a little buffer. One step that I forgot back in the, the GarageBand project is to figure out the tempo of the song you're recording to and then set the project to that before you import the audio. And that will allow you to use the metronome if you'd like, but it also gives you the ability to do a count in, which is really helpful if the bass starts right on beat one of the song. All right, so now that I've got a take that I'm happy with, uh, also look who decided to come say hi. This is Taco. Isn't he cute? He's so cute. Uh, anyway, now that I've got a take that I am happy with, uh, I'm gonna take a listen through and just adjust levels using um, the controls here. One of the big mistakes that I made early on was trying to mix my bass as though it was part of the track. And that's not really the point of these cover videos. You want your bass to be really obvious. So I bring the, uh, the track that I'm playing to pretty far down and leave my bass at zero. And so that way it's like really, really clear what, what's me and what is not. Some people will go through and they'll put EQs on, on the original track to try and eliminate as much bass as possible. I don't think that's necessary if you just do it with this mindset. Just 
bring your bass up quite a bit louder than you think you should so that you can actually hear it. Once you're happy with how that sounds, you'll come up here to File and Export Audio. And we're just gonna put it on the desktop. I haven't even saved it yet. <laughs> You should definitely do that. Save your work as you're going along, but I'm, I'm not too worried about it, so we're just gonna leave it there. Okay, and then that's done, and our audio is right here. So I actually recorded my video from this uh, Canon M50, so I'm just gonna stick the SD card in and then port that onto my computer here in just a second. So what I did is I created this folder, American Idiot Cover, that's the name of the song, that's what we're doing, and I've got both my audio file and my video, and that's all that's gonna be in here. The uh, program that we're gonna use down here, DaVinci Resolve, this is the easiest way to get it to work. So we're gonna open up the program here, and it'll present us with this project browser. We're gonna do a new untitled project, and, and then we're going to bring in our media folder, which is this icon here. We'll just select that and say select, and then I say don't change, this will keep the default settings here, which you can look at under project settings. So uh, 1080p resolution, 24 frames per second, all these things I've set up before. Uh, you probably need a DaVinci Resolve tutorial if you wanna go much deeper than that, but that's essentially all that's going on here. Okay, so now that we've got our two files there, we're gonna come into the edit window, bring our video in here to the timeline, and then also, our audio and you'll see that it creates this other clip here this is just our timeline as its own separate thing it's just how DaVinci works and what we're gonna do is just drag this around to make it fit our waveforms here which it looks like we're pretty close there if you hit alt and then the scroll wheel you can zoom in and then that looks like it's pretty good there if you find that you're having problems getting the precision that you need to move this around, you can unselect this magnet button. What that button does is it snaps things to the end, and so you can disable that if you need so that you can move things around more freely. It looks like it's pretty well lined up just from using the uh, waveforms on that track. So at this point, all I'm gonna do is just clean things up a little bit. I don't wanna hear any of the audio from the camera, so we're just gonna drag that down, turn it off effectively, and then I'm gonna come here to the beginning of the track. Hit B for the blade and just snip that out of there. Hit the delete key and that'll shove everything to the, to the beginning. So my video will open up just like this. We'll just go to the end and we'll just trim that up. We'll just double check and make sure that that's still lined up here at the end as well. See how much I wanna leave in there. Uh, we'll cut it there, that looks fine. So we'll drag it that way and then drag the end of the track there. Cool. So that is really all there is to do to lining it up. I've got my audio muted. What we can do now is maybe do a little bit of color correction. I like to give it a bit more contrast and then you can see the difference that makes. Everything just looks a little bit brighter and happier. I'm not gonna mess with anything else. That seems pretty good, so we'll just leave it. Okay, so to get our video out of here, I like this YouTube preset. We'll give it a name. This is American Idiot Cover which actually I have not even saved because it just, just takes no time at all at this stage. American Idiot Base Cover, sure. And then we'll wanna tell it where to save it. Uh, in my case, I've got a secondary drive where I'm putting all of my stuff on. We'll stick it there. And then uh, it has the option to upload directly to YouTube. I've never set that up because I just never bothered with it. So I unselect that, but otherwise I just leave all the defaults here. We'll say add to render queue, which will make it appear over here. And then we'll start render. This allows you to make multiple renders so that you can uh, export multiple videos at the same time. But since we're only doing the one, yeah, you get it. Anyway, at this point you just Take that file, upload it to YouTube, and wait for the algorithm to completely ignore you and no one ever sees your video. Well done. Anyway, if you found this tutorial helpful, please do give me a like. If you have questions, leave me a comment down below. I will do my best to answer. Um, yeah, subscribe if you want more bass stuff because that's literally all I do on this channel. It's just bass. Nothing but bass. It's all bass. I will never upload a video that is not bass. Anyway, I am AMP the bass player, and why does it keep doing that? And I'll see you on the next video. See you guys.